Hardcore History is one of my favourite podcasts. And the host, Dan Carlin, is one of those guys that has a great voice and is clearly passionate about all things history. His book, The End is Always Near, came out a couple of years ago, and much like his podcasts, the book is a sweeping epic. As the blurb says, Dan Carlin looks at questions and historical events that force us to consider what sounds like fantasy, that we might suffer the same fate that all previous eras did. Will our world ever become a ruin for future archaeologists to dig up and explore? The questions themselves are both philosophical and like something out of the Twilight Zone. Combining his trademark mix of storytelling, history and weirdness, Dan Carlin connects the past and future in fascinating and colourful ways. At the same time, the questions he asks us to consider involve the most important issue imaginable, human survival. From the collapse of the Bronze Age to the challenges of the nuclear era, the issue has hung over humanity like a persistent sword of Damocles. For history nerds, this will be a fascinating read, but I think even non-nerds will like this too, as it's not just a history tome, but has that philosophical question running all the way through it. That said, there is a lot to take in here, as we literally go from the fall of the Assyrian Empire through to nuclear bombs. In fact, that section on nuclear war was the highlight of the book for me. It brought up many things that I hadn't heard or thought of before, like, as Carlin says, the intellectual chasm between the people who were to create these superweapons and the people who would make the decision whether to use them. Again, philosophy and ethics come into the story, and there's a very good pro and con discussion of the question of whether or not dropping the atomic bombs on Japan was the right thing to do or not. It's fascinating stuff. I will say, though, that reading this book is like listening to someone who knows a lot about a lot of things, but who doesn't really go too deep. He mentions a lot of things in each chapter that relate to the topic of the chapter, but they only get mentioned in passing as support of the central hypothesis of each chapter. This is necessary, though, as there's so much to cover. This approach makes the word count nice and economical though, and in the end, it makes the book very readable. This won't be for everyone, but for a wide-ranging discussion on what we can learn from history, this is a great book to pick up and start a conversation with.